G'day folks, Luke here from Fish That Snag. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I'm out stalking the flats this morning. I've uh, got the Crossfire 110 on and I've landed a couple of decent fish already. I just wanted to walk you through how I go about um, when I'm not fishing the drain. So you would have seen uh, my video previously. I'll put the link below about um, fishing the drains. Well, it's dead low right now, so I can't get into this particular drain. But I'm just going to explain to you how I'm using this crossfire and the situation. So we've got a drain coming out just over here. That is exactly why the flat are here. You see all that bait breaking up? And then there's another drain just over there and the same thing's sort of happening. What I'm doing at the moment is I'm using my electric motor and I'm in about 40 to 50 centimetres of water and I'm just moving between the two drains, uh, waiting for the tide to start pushing back up. It's sort of swirling out the front. But the key, don't be afraid to cast way up in the shallows, like 10 centimetres. You'll feel the lure hit the bottom and then you just pause and you let it rise up. And you can just give it another couple of rod tips down as you reel, get that darting action happening and then just pause it. And what you find is a lot of the time on the pause, they'll come up and they'll sort of look at it and then they'll just They'll touch it, they'll either smash the crap out of it, or they'll just touch it. And if you've got good good braid, like Platypus P8, what I've got on here, and a nice light outfit, this is the Atomic Arrows, it's a um, 6 to 12 pound, 7 foot, so a really light outfit where I can feel everything. And you feel that little touch, you can strike. I'm just going to, where I saw that bait breaking up, I'm just going to creep up and see if, see what's doing it. I can see a bit of, I know that there's a couple of turtles and some stingrays around, so it could have been them. Um, but I've pulled two good fish out of here so far, which uh, you'll see the footage for. Now this is where this, um, the Ming Coda is, you know, everybody's got their favourite brand, I guess. I love my Minn Kota. I've had it since 2013. It's never let me down. Pretty hardy. I've put it through torment. Um, and this is where they really come into their own, because I'm, like you can see the bottom right there, I'm coming in real shallow now. And that, you see the bit of water displacement out there. So something's cruising around. The trick is not to go too fast with these crossfires. You really gotta see I, I think I've either fouled there. Something's happening. Touch and bottom too. They're fouled. Sometimes they do foul up. There's one thing I'm not enjoying, and that is the midges. Warming up, midge central. The other good thing about these electric motors is you can, uh, with the Minn Kota, you can just, you can put a, a, a bearing setting, I guess. Like you just hit the northern button, so wherever you've got it pointed, you hit the north button, and it doesn't take you north, but it, what it does is it lays a set of GPS marks, and then it just follows them. Regardless of uh, wind or tide, it'll just follow that route. So you can point it at something and say, right, I want to go over there, and it'll just cruise along. 
So it's really, uh, it's really good, really handy. And then you, um, you get a fish, you just spot lock, do what you got to do. I really want to show you uh, the strike because uh, every time I turn the camera off, it's when I get a fish. <laughs> it's really I keep missing the strike. There we go. That was the finest of little touches. Finest of little touches. All right, so we'll anchor lock. He didn't even hit that on the pause. He just went straight for that. But he didn't really hit it hard. Crossfire 110, gold colour, Lumo eyes, thanks for sending it up Crossy, good fish mate.